Our lab is generally interested in the molecular mechanisms underlying brain development. In the past few years, we started to tackle a broader problem, which is to understand how the human brain emerged during evolution, and in particular, identifying the me genetic mechanisms that differentiate the development of the human brain compared to other mammals. To start addressing this complex question, we focused our attention on gene duplication, which is a major driver of evolution. Recent studies, primarily from Evan Eichler's lab at University of Washington in Seattle, uh, have identified evolutionary recent gene duplications that are specific to the human lineage. And a limited number of genes, about 30, um, have been duplicated specifically in the human lineage after its separation from the non-human primate lineage about six million years ago. The functional significance of this human-specific gene duplication during brain development is currently unknown. And one exception is SRGAP2, a gene that our lab has been studying for the past five or six years that is abundantly expressed in the neocortex. In the May 11, 2012 issue of the journal Cell, we publish a paper characterizing the function of SRGAP2 and its human-specific paralogs during brain development. Well, we're studying the gene SRGAP2, which is present in all mammals as a single copy. However, along the course of human evolution, it has gone through two specific duplication events. In an accompanying paper in this issue of Cell, Dr. Evan Eichler's group uh, has shown that these extra copies exist in the genomes of modern humans, as well as Neanderthals and Denisovan genomes, but they're largely absent from uh, the genomes of our closest living relatives, the gorilla, chimpanzee, and orangutan. The first domain of SRGAP2 is called the FBAR domain, and this was copied in two successive events, giving rise to uh, the genes that we now call SRGAP2B and SRGAP2C. The most recent copy, SRGAP2C, has emerged approximately two and a half million years ago and is now fixed in the modern human population. Interestingly, we found that this human-specific paralog, SRGAP2C, is expressed in the developing and adult human brain and encodes for a truncated version of the FBAR domain of the ancestral SRGAP2 protein. Now, one of the functions of the ancestral SRGAP2 gene is to make protrusions of the cell membrane called philopodia. And this activity is known to slow down the migration of newborn neurons in the cortex by causing their neurites to branch excessively. And we found using both in vitro and in vivo approaches that the human-specific protein SRGAP2C acts as a negative modulator of the ancestral protein during this process. On account of its truncated nature, the human-specific protein can still bind to the ancestral protein, but it inhibits its function during migration. Inhibition of the ancestral SRGAP2 by its human-specific copy allows these migrating neurons to reach their destination faster. This may be advantageous in the context of the developing human brain, where the total distance of migration is greatly increased compared to other mammals. So in the mouse cortex, SRGAP2 is highly expressed in the first week after birth, which is a period that is very important for synapse formation. And we found that ancestral SRGAP2 accumulates in dendritic spines, which are small protrusions along the dendrites that are the main site of excitatory synaptic contacts in the neocortex. So we then decided to address the function of SRGAP2 in spines. In vivo, wild type mice already show mature spine morphology and density about three weeks after birth, so when they are still uh, juveniles. However, at the same age, mice that are not cut for the SRGAP2 genes, so mice that uh, do not express SRGAP2 anymore, display an increased density of spines, and those spines are longer and thinner than wild type neurons, which suggests that they are still immature. Interestingly, uh, in mice that are deficient for SRGAP2, spines finally reach maturation in adults, but they remain at a higher density and they also retain a longer neck. So this indicates that the function of ancestral SRGAP2 is to limit the number of spines and to promote their maturation. In agreement with our previous results, uh, expression of human-specific SRGAP2C in mouse cortical neurons in vivo mimics ancestral SRGAP2 deficiency so it induces neoteny during spine maturation, which means that spines remain immature for a longer time. And we also found that adult neurons expressing human-specific SRGAP2C 
exhibit a higher density of longer spines. And this is very important because these are differences that were shown by other teams to be characteristics of human neurons. So together, um, our results show a crucial role for SRGAP2 during spine maturation in vivo, and they suggest that the human-specific duplication of SRGAP2 has contributed to the emergence of human-specific features uh, during brain evolution. We are now interested in following up on these observations, and we focus on three main directions. First, we're determining the molecular mechanisms underlying SRGAP2 function during synaptic maturation. We're also testing the consequences of changes uh, upon manipulating SRGAP2 function on spine density and morphology on the function of neural networks in the cortex and also on mouse behavior, maybe. Second, we would like to determine if mutations or copy number variations affecting SRGAP2 can cause uh, neurodevelopmental disorders such as autism spectrum disorders or schizophrenia where synaptic development is thought to be altered. And finally, we're also eager to determine the function of the other 30 or so human-specific gene duplications using the same paradigm that we've developed for SRGAP2. These genes represent unique forms of genomic innovation that might have played a crucial role during the evolution of the human brain and the emergence of human-specific features of brain development.